It's all today live from the couch with Carolina Bermudez, John Elliott, and Lisa Kearney. Managing your personal finances, learning real life strategies from a classic board game. Do not pass go. Yeah, I mean, if, they, if you're one of those techno people and that's the type of thing you like, I prefer, you know, Boggle or like John, you said earlier, <laughs> Candyland. Little do not pass go and collect your $200. That's what we're doing. Shoot, game. Shoots and ladders. Maybe yes, that's Small more madness. raggy speed. Hey, well, speaking of big games, Phil Orbane should have his own token. Listen to this. He's the chief judge at the World Monopoly Championships. And he's also the author of a new book, Monopoly Money and You, How to Profit from the Game's Success. Phil Orbanes, welcome to the couch. Good morning. That's great to be Thank here. Thank you for in being here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, now, some people are thinking, how can a board game actually help me make money? But you say that Monopoly is a great way to teach business. Why do you, th why do you think that? Well, I don't think most people get good training in handling money when they're in school. They come out, they're confronted with the need to find a way to grow their assets, and they make a lot of mistakes. But if you think back to all the lessons that you could learn while playing Monopoly, handling the money, negotiating, deal making, it's a basis to help you to make wiser decisions in real life. But how much can we expect kids to pick up on this? I mean, they play when they're young. What should we expect them to learn? Well, it's very seminal. It starts off when you're young. For example, Monopoly is probably the greatest tool that kids have to learn the skill of negotiation. Mm -hmm. If you are a tough-minded negotiator, you get less in return. People don't want to deal with you. And that's mm -hmm. a great skill to take into real life. You find out that if people respect you and they want to make deals with you, they know you're, you're not going to be a pushover. Uh, they will be more responsive and you will do better. Mm -hmm. Monopoly teaches you that skill. And hats off to Parker Brothers because they came out with an electronic version with an yeah. ATM yes. that the oh, kids cool. love. The, uh, oh. yeah. What about adults? What can adults who have played this game for decades yep. take away anew from Monopoly? The art of cash management, diversification, learning the importance of return on investment, and most importantly perhaps is being prepared for setbacks. Mm -hmm. Monopoly is filled with little penalties and some big penalties, and it teaches you Jail. to become more resilient, <laughs> yes. more resilient in real life when you're handling money and you, you know, shingles blow off the roof, you have to fix them. You can't ignore it. Well, can you get more into the specifics yeah. of diversifying for us? Because you just yeah. covered some of them. So give us some examples of how we can diversify. Okay. Well, the best group on the board to own, for example, are the oranges, not the dark blue. I found that funny yeah. because normally yeah. people want boardwalk yeah, and yeah, park yeah, yeah. place. Of so course. why is orange so good? Because during during the course of the game, everyone goes to jail frequently. Mm. Sure. And right. when you come out of jail, the dice will take you through or over the oranges and the red. So these two oh, groups are yes. the best Makes for sense. that reason. Okay, they okay. get landed on more often. And furthermore, if you look at the rents on every single monopoly right. deed, you can determine its return on investment. Well, the oranges and the reds just happen to have a superior return. They do. And if you get to the three house level, which is when the rents really escalate, you can take enough cash away from your opponent so they can't build against you. Okay. So back to diversification. If you have a great color group, you own some railroads which will produce income so you can develop your group. And if you own a few single properties that block your opponents, you have a perfect portfolio. And in real life, what you learn is if you put all your money into the hot, trendy investment, you're probably going to get burned. That's true. So if you spread it, you're yeah. prepared for good and bad, all weather. Well, and back to the return on investment concept, yeah. this really does apply to real life, you say? Absolutely. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you find out when you study Monopoly that some of these um, properties at certain house levels are better than others, especially at different times in the game. And that's yeah. analogous to what is moving in real life. Mm -hmm. You know, if tech mm -hmm. is moving and, and you're in tech, you're going to do a lot better than if you're sitting in defensive stocks, for example. Oh, my gosh, you have thought this whole it really is, and You, you know, you it. should write a book about this. Well, I might, I might, I might yeah. do that. What no, about cash actually, management? You get cash management. You cannot win Monopoly if you sit on your $1,500 in cash. You have to invest it. And oh. in real life, if you put all your money into a bank and you own a paltry rate of interest, you're never going to accumulate a nest egg that, you know, will help you to have a comfortable life. Mm -hmm. So you must invest. Invest means taking a risk. And in Monopoly, when you invest, you're now converting your cash into buying properties, building houses, and hopefully doing so 
at a time when you will be the one who benefits from right. the rents and you won't be landing on your opponent's rents. So timing is important, location is important, and sitting on cash is neither. Yeah. Okay, quickly before we go. Yeah. I always choose the Scotty dog. Oh, I know, but, you guys, but you guys did something really crazy this year that a lot of people were up in arms about. You replaced the iron oh, with yeah. the kitty cat. With the cat. Yeah. Yes. Hasbro, who is the, the makers or the licensor of Monopoly, has decided that it was time to bring some element that is current and contemporary into the game. And they thought, well, why not upgrade a token? So they yes. held a contest on Facebook. And in the contest, you would vote for one of five tokens to enter the game, and one of the existing ones would be knocked out right. in its yeah. place. So, alas, the little iron got knocked out. I wanted the diamond ring, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, I voted for it. it. Where, yes, where's, I did. This is, where, someone stole the cat. Where's the cat? <laughs> the cat's not in this we don't one have yet. It's, oh, say, it's coming. This yeah. freaks me out there. Because yeah. yeah. I know we've got cash management. <laughs> now we need cat management as well, you'll, too. You'll be having the Scotty is the second most popular okay. token, and it's the most popular among the ladies. Oh, well, there you yeah. go. It's all right. I got my finger on the pulse. There. Well, the book is called Monopoly, Money, and You. Phil Orbanes, thanks so much for stopping by. Oh, it was by. great. Thanks, And I love the tie. It's Thank got all the Monopoly you. players yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs>